Hi everyone, uh, in my today's session, I'm going to uh, explain or demo how to implement MSAL, Microsoft Authentication Layer Based Authentication in your single page application. I'm taking an example of a React SPA application for this purpose okay and this demonstration will happen with react only but same you can do with angular or Vue or any other uh, popular javascript library which you are using for your product development okay so first thing create a project okay that in my case i have already created but if you want to create a project which you have to use this command create create hyphen react hyphen app okay and give the desired name okay like hello world or whatever as per your need in my case i have given mzel browser okay okay once you press enter it will create this product by, uh, project by this name it will take two to three minutes okay once that is done successfully you need to install two important libraries which are called at the rate azure slash mzel browser okay and then at the rate azure slash mzel hyphen react okay and the commands being npm install at the rate you just take this value and paste it over here okay let me do it as i already installed okay so hit enter it will install this library and do the same for react okay so in my case it's already installed so i'm not going to do that once again okay now after these prerequisites, you created a React application and then you added support for Azure based MSAL library. You install the MSAL libraries that is for browser as well as React. Now the next step comes is you need to create a configuration file, which is basically a JavaScript file. Okay. And it will look something like this. Okay. So don't worry about all the details over here okay the most important piece of configuration setting which i need over here is this client id okay or the app id and how how are we going to create this or where will we get this i'm going to show it soon okay so you should have a azure account okay so in my case i have azure account which is having a default directory okay that's my uh, default directory if i hover over it will show you okay and my default directory has its own id which is called a tenant id starting with 903 ending with 654 and my email id for which okay i created my uh, basically this uh, azure account and then also you can see my domain which is uh, my username dot on microsoft dot com okay so in Azure, each and every application is represented using an abstraction called app registrations. Okay, so always remember if you want to run your applications, it may be a front end application, a API service, okay, it's a Windows service, it's a background job, it should be associated with the app registration on Azure. Okay, and using this app registration only, you are going to achieve the inter application, inter services communication okay so in order to set permissions if one application wants to access another application for example if a front-end application wants to consume a back-end api if both of them have a separate app registrations then you need to set the permissions okay nothing will happen as it is like your on-premises systems no okay so you need to make use of app registrations. so if you are from an on-premises development background, an app registration always represents your service principles or a service account which we used to use. Okay, so the concept of service account is nothing but app registrations. Okay, guys, just for your information. So quickly, I'm going to create an app. Click on new app registration. I will give a name. Let's say MBS. Call it front end hyphen app hyphen dev because this belongs to my dev environment okay so what are the supported account types okay what all kinds of accounts you want this application or api needs to be accessed in this case i'm showing you in the context of a front-end application so it's an application not an api okay accounts in this organizational directory only okay default directory only that is my tenant whoever the user of this tenant only those people can access this application accounts in any organizational directory okay any microsoft enter id and one more point to highlight the 
Microsoft Azure Active Directory has been renamed to Microsoft Entra ID. So now onwards, if uh, if you hear Microsoft Entra ID, it is nothing but Azure Active Directory. Okay. So accounts in any organizational directory. Okay. The first option says that users within your default directory or your tenant will be able to access the application. Here, users who are there in your organization directory, apart from that, users from other directory or tenants which are there on azure they can also access this application yes you can do that in that case it is called multi-tenant okay this is single tenant this is multi-tenant and then accounts in any organizational directory plus personal accounts like skype xbox live accounts whatever and the fourth option only personal accounts okay so this application will be only accessible by personal accounts only okay like the way i have okay outlook.com live.com okay no other people can access that account so i'm going with the first option for the easy demonstration purpose uh, that is the default directory only single tenant okay so select a platform what it is it's public client native application whether it's a mobile or a desktop is it a web application or is it a spa in my case it's a yes, single page application i'll select this and then i have to enter the url the redirect url basically so http colon slash slash always remember this should be your uh, as i'm demonstrating it on a development machine okay so that's why i am giving uh, my local host url over here but once this application has deployed to higher environments or in the integrated environments i would say that would be the right word then you have to give the actual domain name okay like http colon slash slash dev hyphen seven heaven dot com and then qa hyphen seven heaven dot com like that okay just an example so say http colon slash slash localhost colon my local application is running on port 3000 okay that's it so this is the required information okay and one important information being if you want if you want to enable the debugging of your application in the dev integrated environment in such case you need to add you must add this localhost uh, redirect url okay so that your application can be de debugged from your local machine okay so you can add your integrated environment url also plus you can also add this localhost url also and it should be only for your lab environment or your development environment you should not give this kind of localhost url redirect urls to your higher environments like qa uat or production okay just keep this in mind okay and at any time you can add redirect urls any number of redirect urls okay azure allows that so i will click on register so this should be quick yes as expected so this is the most important piece of information guys the app id also called as tenant id i think this is the id using which uh, this authentication flow will work okay so i will copy this and i will go to my visual studio code and i will paste over here let me paste it over here okay as they say this is the only mandatory field that you need to supply okay so this is my client id okay then object id is nothing but your service principal id i would say okay not used much tenant id is nothing but your default directory okay or the tenant id basically in which you are working the azure tenant okay so this is my app registration and uh, if you go to the branding and properties if you want to change the name change the name if you want to provide some logo yes you can upload a logo and that logo will appear there okay home page url you can set over here okay lot of other properties are there i'm not going to yeah deal with them now okay i would like to go with the default okay so publisher domain is my default domain okay dot on microsoft.com okay if you want to use your own domain you can do that okay i will go to authentication okay very important thing what i need to do is over here okay implicit grant and hybrid flows for this no what they are saying is request a token directly from the authorization endpoint if the application has single page architecture spa and doesn't use the authorization code flow or if 
it invokes a web API via JavaScript select both access token and ID tokens okay for ASP.NET core web apps and other web apps that use hybrid authentication select only ID tokens okay very clear information we have if you want to learn more about it you can click on this link and you will get how this configuration should be done basically so what I would do is I, I will enable both access tokens as well as ID tokens that is for implicit flows and for the hybrid flow both okay and okay that is done and now I will go ahead token configuration oh sorry I forgot to save that's true cancel first I have to save this done okay then certificates and secrets as of now I have not created any secrets for this uh, app ID because this is my front-end application okay token configuration you can add optional claims basically so once you are successfully authenticated these claims will come your JSON web token I would say okay when you decode it basically you should be able to see the added claims available in that uh, token basically okay the decoded token I would prefer always compute these uh, claims uh, at the runtime okay based on the user management the user rules and permissions implemented in your application level okay for example if you are making use of a asp.net core web application okay in that case uh, if you are managing your user permissions and rules at your application level by storing them into a database so what you need to do is during the startup itself when the user is authenticated successfully you write a middleware there you check from your database for this user what are the various rules have been provided what are the various permissions have been provided based on that you construct the claims dynamically and set it to your yeah the user principal object which is available in your context object basically okay so that's just the information API permissions very important by default there is only one permission provided to Microsoft graph Microsoft graph is basically a service provided by Microsoft in order to query user related information not only user related information a lot of information we can query from this service okay like your various permissions office 365 account related information okay and then user information all these things can be queried from this service so by default it provides user dot read permission which is delegated in nature okay so that is there and uh, what else we are going to configure over here is and apart from that one more important stuff is app rules okay so app role is also uh, an important configuration but again as I explained in the context of token configuration like adding the claims okay so what I would suggest is you should dynamically construct your app roles in your application itself based on the application specific uh, user management which involves roles and permissions okay keep it in your database dynamically construct and validate it in your API controllers by using the authorized attribute okay uh, well that's enough I think from the manifest you can see the manifest of your app registration what all things are there okay so this is it so let's switch to the Visual Studio code now so the most important piece of information which I got from here that is the app ID so I have pasted over here my authority being yes HTTPS colon slash slash login dot Microsoft online dot com okay this is from the Microsoft and the next thing is basically your tenant information okay so replace the placeholder with your tenant subdomain so my subdomain is my subdomain name dot on Microsoft dot com which I have already done okay redirect URI points to the window dot location dot origin you must register this URI on your Azure portal or app registration this redirect URI is nothing but your redirect URI okay whatever we have registered in app registration so if I go here this should be the, this one where is that yeah under authentication which is coming to somewhere this one yeah HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 3000 okay 
so you can add additional URIs also okay that is also possible okay for example if you are on a development environment which I already explained if you want to locally debug that application then there should be two redirect URLs first one is this one the local host based URI okay and then the actual URI like dev hyphen seven heaven dot com like that okay so that's all about it so let's switch back to the visual studio code and here redirect URI has been set which is to slash post logout redirect URI okay which is a slash again to the root of the application itself okay and navigate to login request URL okay which is false if true will navigate back to the original request location before processing the auth code response which I'm going to show you by setting it to true okay and then cache what is the preferred location for uh, caching which is session storage so configures cache location the session storage is more secure but local storage gives you SSO between tabs okay the same token can be or the same session can be utilized across the tabs okay if you set it to local storage but I'm using the session storage which is more secure and uh, yeah set this to true if you are having issue on uh, Internet Explorer 11 or edge so that's why I'm not using that browser so I have set it to false so I don't want to uh, store the auth state into my cookies okay and there is some logger callbacks uh, which you can make use of in order to handle various errors like error info verbose warning whatever okay and then one more important piece of object which is a login request basically okay a login request which contains the scopes okay as I shown you while configuring my app registration the default API permissions if you would have seen over here we have user.read right guys so this has to be mentioned over here that's a user.read okay so what this says is scopes you add here will be prompted for user consent during sign in so when you try to sign into our application basically microsoft azure will ask you for your consent okay you need to give the consent for this scope then you have to continue okay so that's all about the auth-config.js file which is very important okay so now I will start from the code side. So first one index.js. What are the important uh, the objects we are going to use? Okay. So I have written the code uh, for the sake of time. So the first important stuff is you have to import a public client application. Okay. Always remember MZL always provides two kind of classes public client application and confidential client application as our web browser based applications are public client applications okay from where PA users will log into the application that's the entry point so public client application uh, you will import it from at the rate azure slash mzal browser and then the event type which will help you to identify the various events or the progress of your login process if you hover over here you would see what are the various event types initialize start and account added removed login start login success login failure a lot of that okay so a recommended and most important practice always remember this m cell should be instantiated outside of the component tree to prevent it from being reinstantiated on re-renders okay always remember don't put this instantiation inside a component or your app component okay whenever your app component re-renders whenever uh, you change some text box content whenever some re-rendering happens whenever the binding of the data whenever the data changes so across re-rendering what it will do is if you use it inside a component it will keep on creating this object it's not at all a recommended practice so keep it outside of that so you have to put it into index.js okay so that's one important thing and then default to using the first account if no account is active on the page load okay again it's a custom logic it's up to us okay so what we are doing is if msal instance dot get active account and then also the get all accounts length is greater than zero okay what we are doing is account selection logic is app dependent adjust as needed for the different use cases okay it should be based on your business cases so what we are doing is by default we are setting an active account to the first account coming from this collection okay get all accounts 
then listen for sign in event and set active account okay that is also one approach msl instance this one the public client application object also provides a method called add event callback where you can basically refer to various events which will take place during the login or uh, sorry the authentication process i would say so what i'm doing over here is uh, in this callback if event type is equal to login success okay and the payload dot account is not equal to null what i'm doing account i'm setting it to the account object and msal instance or set active account equal to that successfully authenticated account okay on successful login whatever account i get in my payload that account i am setting as an active account okay so that's the stuff with respect to setting the active accounts and apart from that the most important stuff is now the component rendering okay react dom dot create root okay this is where react dom basically creates a root element okay which is coming from your uh, uh, what I would say index.html over here where is that root uh, yeah over here okay so now the actual rendering will start so that's what I'm showing okay so first it will create the root element and when you do the root dot render when you put this app element your entry point basically the high level container the app element you have to pass and property or props by name instance equal to you pass that mzal instance okay this way it will be available to your app component okay so let's move on to the app.js now so So this is the very simple flow I'm showing you the redirect flow. Okay, so when you try to access the application, uh, it will redirect you to login.microsoftonline.com for your app ID and the tenant ID. You have to authenticate there. If you are successful, then only you will access your application. Okay, so required uh, classes or types, authenticated template, unauthenticated template use msal hook and msal provider class or the type i would say from the msal hyphen react okay a ready-made available solutions have been provided by this library itself guys so don't make use of any custom logic by checking account dot count is greater than zero if it is available then show the required view otherwise show user unauthorized view no everything has been provided inside this library okay just make use of that okay so the first one which is rapid view okay a react component basically or i would say a partial view okay so here what i'm doing is using the msal hook okay i'm taking the instance and what is this it is basically your i public client application which you had created in your index.js this one okay app.js yeah and then using that instance dot get active account okay you will try to get an active account okay if there is an account active account you will get a reference to that okay otherwise what happens i'm going to show you okay uh, let's move on to this one yeah the view okay so this is the view which is going to be rendered it has been divided into two parts the authenticated template unauthenticated template okay so if you are authenticated successfully then it's going to show you authenticated successfully message a very trivial example i am taking but in your case it will load your applications first view or a dashboard view if you are not able to authenticate successfully then it will show you a button over here okay a sign up button so when you click on this button it will go to a handle redirect which is over here and inside this method you are calling on this instance which is a public client application object basically on that you call the dot login redirect and you pass the important information which is called login request okay and what is this login request i had already shown you people over here basically a list of scopes against which after authentication you will you need to provide the consents okay so you'll pass the login request and then prompt you give it a value create okay so in case of errors i'm handling the errors by putting it to the console.log okay very simple one so this is my rapid view or a partial view which takes care of all this logic okay and now 
my actual app view the app component what my app component will contain is it will receive the instance okay from index.js passing over here the props what is that props instance which I'm passing over here and it will receive in your app.js over here that's what I have put so this app function will receive that instance over here and I have to wrap this wrapped content view or this wrapped view inside this MSAL provider okay this is basically a provider which provides a public client application instance to all the children's which are wrapped inside this component or provider object or provider element basically okay that's the main use of this the one of the required uh, use of providers in react is to pass data or uh, uh, I would say session data to its child elements and that's what they say MSAL context provider component this must be rendered above any other components that use MSAL okay so all the components which come inside this they will be having access to this uh, public client application MSAL object also the react hooks the MSAL react hooks I would say okay uh, a lot of theory now let's run the application npm start well so my application has loaded I can see the sign up button over here okay so what I'm going to do is now I will click on the sign up button okay yeah I need to give my email ID the one which is in my default directory so I'll give this one next so you need to enter the password okay so sign in So it's asking me stay signed in so you don't have to sign in again for the time being I would say no see so the authentication is successful and can you see the app name MBS frontend app dev guys okay the app registration that I had created the front end for the front end application so this application is not published by Microsoft this app would like to sign in you sign you in and read your profile maintain access to data you have given it access to okay you have to consent basically okay select it say yes and I'm successfully authenticated so authenticated successfully okay so if you go here uh, say inspection basically inspect application session storage click on this I think you can see the tokens guys okay msal dot account key as you would see all the required information what all things it's saving over here okay okay so let's go through what all information is there the credential type this is ID token environment login dot windows dot net okay realm which is nothing but my tenant ID okay my default directory and then the secret basically sent from the Azure AD or enter ID on successful authentication okay this is refresh token in order to refresh the token okay and then account keys okay that's what your access token ID token and refresh token okay all these things are over here and what is my profile what is the scope I think you can uh, basically uh, see all those information uh, being rendered over here okay pretty handy So this is the access token and this is the secret so what I will do I will take this secret I will copy its token type is bearer open ID profile user dot read and email these are the scopes okay uh, coming on by default uh, Azure AD will give open ID profile and email okay 
Additionally, we added one more, which is user dot read. So all the scopes are here. So if I go to JSON token, the JWT decoder, let me show you that quickly. Okay, guys. So let me paste that token, whatever I receive. Okay. Uh, it's not the one it seems. Yeah, this time I copied properly. So I think you can see once I decoded that JSON web token, okay, over here. So you can very easily see what all information it contains. Okay, audience, okay, ISS. This is my tenant ID, okay, expiry set as a timestamp, IST, okay and my app id which i created the app registration which is being uh, returned in app id and email my email id these are the claims basically okay email is a claim okay so this is my email id family name okay given name all these things you can uh, id type user ip address from where authentication took place okay name OID most important thing is the Azure object ID or object identifier. Okay, so for my user, this is the object identifier allocated in Azure Active Directory or Entra ID. Okay, using this ID only, I can query all my information either email ID or this one. But most of the time in enterprise grade applications, this is the ID which will be used to uniquely identify the users in Azure applications, and it's a best practice to use this OID basically. Okay. So scopes, yeah, open ID has been sent, profile has been sent, user.read has been sent and the email has been sent so that you can see over here, okay. So that's all uh, it seems basically. So the token when you decode, you can find all this information within it, okay. So I'm going to close this. So the way how you signed in the same way you can log out also so on this public client application instance uh, basically you can call the logout method very simple create a lambda expression assign it to a variable over here and what i have done is very simple on authenticated template wanna log out i have given a button click on that and a logout and simply instance dot logout it will log you out of your account basically or session okay so if i see over here I have authenticated successfully, so I click on the logout. That's it. I'm logged out of the application. Okay. So it is asking which account do you want to sign out of? Click on this, and it will take. It will basically sign you out of that application. Okay. So click on that, and that's it. You are signed out of your account successfully, and it asks you to close all your browsers. Okay, guys. So that's all about the MSAL based uh, uh, authentication in order to implement uh, the authentication uh, from your browser based applications, which is a public client application. Okay. And there are multiple ways to uh, perform login uh, with this public client application instance. Basically, here I made use of the method login redirect, but let's see what are the other possibilities. Okay. See, uh, you can log in using a pop-up also. See, login redirect that we used. You can use a login pop-up somewhere. Uh, it's a logout pop-up. Huh. Yes, the login pop-up, the first one. Okay. In that case, what happens is basically it will open a small pop-up. There it will ask you to authenticate yourself. I think you would have seen most of uh, Microsoft application in some cases. In especially in Visual Studio, it will open a small browser window. There you will log in, and once login is successful, you will be able to access the application. Okay, so that is one approach you can make use of login redirect. Anyway, we have shown logout. We have seen logout pop up again performs the logout operation in a pop up. Okay, so that is it. And uh, yeah, one more uh, feature is SSO silent. Basically, single sign on login as well as single sign on silently okay that is also on configuration in my next video i'm going to explain each and every login as well as logout process guys
okay that will be helpful for you people okay and there are a lot of useful handy methods like acquiring the tokens also so if i if you see over here can you see this method acquire token acquire token through a pop-up acquire token redirect acquire token silently okay same the login equivalents but they will only acquire the tokens by code okay so in this scenario what happens you know you are not required to enter your username and password no this is a completely separate flow okay this is required when you want to implicitly acquire a token and pass it to a api applications request header in such cases basically you can make use of this approach and the request will be very different so if we see the request go to implementation and if i see the request how does it request looks like go to definition can you see uh, authorization code request uh, contains code native account id okay all this information you need to fill it seems basically okay yeah so i hope this video is uh, useful for you people okay thank you for listening and have a nice day